Peace be with you, and welcome to the October webinar of the World Christian Leadership Conference under the guidance of our beloved and esteemed chairman, Dr. Kihun Kim. I am George Augustus Stallings, Jr., the patriarch founder and senior global pastor of Imani Temple, uh, African-American Catholic congregation headquartered uh, in Washington, D.C., as well as his having the privilege of serving as the president of the Interreligious Association for Peace and Development, North America. We are focusing on the theme for throughout this session that deals with our global peace effort in Europe, Africa, and Korea as we focus on the theme, True Family Movement for World Peace. We are privileged at this hour to bring forth at this time, the Reverend Bakari Kamara, who is the General Overseer of IAPD, Heavenly Africa, and the African and the Africa Regional Chaniwan Co-Chair to deliver our opening prayer, Reverend Kamara, the floor is yours. Thank you, dear Patriarch and my brother, Bishop Stalin. And uh, also my special greeting to Dr. Kim as a chair of this uh, whole plan organization WCLC worldwide and a uh, special greeting to a uh, special guest uh, speakers from Africa Dr. Kathy Rigney, Dr. Malcolm from Europe and all respected leaders. I'm grateful and I'm honored to offer this moment to report this prayer. Let us bow down, bow our head to offer this prayer. Our beloved Heavenly Parent, thank you, thank you, thank you for this day you have ordered for all of us here on this platform, either on place on this platform or online around the world. He gave us this day so we can reflect on this very special theme true family movement to realize world peace. A day for us to reflect, our heavenly parent, on what we need to do in order to be your children, to recognize you as our heavenly parent, and to recognize each other as siblings living in one family a special family, a holy family under you. Heavenly Parent, throughout the providence of restoration, you reveal yourself through different central figures in different eras. Moses tells us you are Yahweh, Jehovah, the Creator, who exists and created all existing beings. Our Lord Jesus Christ reveal that you are the Father of heaven, our he heavenly Father. True Mother, the Mother of Peace, we recognize the central pillar of actual providence. In this current era, proclaim that you are our heavenly parent. And we have a parent-child relationship with you. And we are blessed to be called, finally, a children you can live with. Our first ancestor, Adam and Eve, left your holy bosom due to the fall. You started the providence of restoration to bring back our ancestors and to make them the real, true ancestors. It took long time before 
you find one individual. You are only begotten son two, after 2,000 years ago. If you have one only begotten daughter, a begotten son, certainly he wanted also a begotten daughter. So this didn't be, has been not realized. The Christianity has been prepared the foundation for the historical moment to receive the only begotten daughter. Now we are living this special era where we can celebrate the first coming of the second and uh, the only begotten daughter. Now true mother is proclaiming peace, not only peace in word, peace in lifestyle, peace with me, peace through love, peace starting with me, centered on heavenly parent ideals. If we unite with this heart, in mind, in action, we can completely realize the foundation of true peace, the foundation of the kingdom of heaven on earth. Please today, our heavenly parent, empower us with your spirit and we can be united as your sons and daughters, centering on our heavenly parent, uniting with the spirit and heart of the mother of peace. Today, we are celebrating this moment because of her grace and blessing. Please let us inherit the grace of all our ancestors, all the central figures, but particularly the time we are living is a time, the last days where the marriage of lamb should be achieved and together we want to celebrate and reach out the whole humanity so we can realize one family under God. Thank you so much, our heavenly parent. We are coming together. I would like to report this so we can start this special webinar. He has been prepared with you and he's going to be concluded with you. And your love will be the engine. And we want to live with this engine and move forward for the realization of our ideal. Thank you so much, and thank you once again for all these uh, respective speakers. Please walk and talk to them, talk through them, so we can be resurrected. We can have new life with you. I offer this report in our own name here, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of True Parent, and in my name, in the name of all of us. Amen. Aju. Aju, Aju, Aju. Thank you so much, my beloved and esteemed brother, the Reverend Bakari Kamara. You covered 6,000 years of providential history in just a few moments, and we were all touched by the profundity of your prayer, the sincerity of your heart, and your love for God and true parents, especially true mother, the mother of peace, the only begotten daughter of God. I know that the heavenly realm is rejoicing at the power of your prayer and the way you touch the heart of each of us. And it is only appropriate that after such an anointed and powerful prayer that we have a musical selection at this time, a powerful song that embraces the content of Reverend Bakri Kamara's prayer, the song is Chanel Guk, where heaven, where the kingdom of heaven on earth is established. And we have singing this powerful selection, the choir, the choir, listen to this, the choir from the Cameroons, the heavenly Africa choir rendering that song, Chanel Guk. Let us now hear from the Heavenly Africa Choir of the Cameroons. Oh, 
Je suis présent par son amour Je sais que papa me répond toujours Les Chong Chiwon me donnent de la paix Et je ressens le cœur du père Abuji Omonim I am the son of the Lord He raised me up above the sky Where our heart intertwines In goodness and divine It's where that I reside <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. Woo! I don't know how that song made you feel, but I literally still have goosebumps. I don't know uh, if the joy that I am experiencing in this moment after hearing that wonderful and powerful song uh, is going to prevent me from holding back the tears. There's There's something that deeply touched me in the singing of that song. Because I know how true parents have lab labored over 50 years to establish Chanel Gook. And then to see it 
performed in music and to see uh, that powerful video. I, I, I've never been so moved by a video in my life. And I, I hope that each of you felt the same way that I'm feeling right now. But thanks to that powerful song, Channel Good, performed by the Heavenly Africa Choir of the Cameroons. And I cannot think of anyone to bring on better after that powerful selection than our beloved chairman of the World Christian Leadership Conference and the senior pastor of the Las Vegas Family Church, the true son of true parents who convey the heart of true parents to us every time he speaks. I, I speak of none other than Dr. Kihun Kim. Dr. Kim, the floor is now yours. Thank you, thank you so, so much. Our dear Patriarch George A. Storings, and thank you so much for this wonderful video. Mm. Uh, but I have to apologize. Uh, uh, today video a little bit slow down. When I see original video, uh, it was very moving. Uh, like uh, uh, today, Patriot Storings, you tears uh, to me when I hear and see this video really tearing down uh, my heart and mm. uh, my spirit. So thank you again, uh, Africa. And true mother been to Africa last three days more than any other uh, country and then pray for uh, Africa and their ancestors. And true mother blessed every country and Africa. So once again, we are so grateful our founder WCLC and how much mother of peace been to so many country and pray for their sake and for the sake of God's providence of restoration. And today, so many family members and our clergy and worldwide Christian leaders, they joined together this uh, webinar. <clears throat> At the same time, so HJ, International Great School for Peace and Public Leadership, located in New York, and under the leadership of uh, Dr. and Professor uh, Walshi and their class of 40, a world religion class, they are joining together and hearing about the WCLC and true family for the sake of world peace. And then uh, Dr. Walshi recommend all students come and hear worldwide leaders, uh, their testimonies, not only uh, their presentation, their action, and they can hear and learn so many things from this uh, webinar. So once again, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Walsy from New York. And we are so grateful uh, you are a student with us uh, today. And we continue from last uh, month's webinar, and we really want to show around the world before we celebrate our fourth year anniversary of founding ACLC, uh, WCLC, uh, centering on Mother Moon. Here today, uh, Dr. Balcom from European Continental Director, and also we have uh, Reverend uh, and Dr. Kathy uh, Wigley, from Africa and leadership of Africa last uh, 45 years. And now also uh, we have uh, KCLC centering on Reverend Suman Kim and Minister Laura Young will be representative uh, sharing her presentation for the sake of world peace. So once again, thank you our speakers and thank you my friend and colleague all around the world. God bless each one of you. Thank you so much, Dr. Kim Hu Kim. Dr. Ki Hoon Kim, Kim said it all. Uh, that's why he embodies the heart of true parents. And I hope after those welcoming remarks, all feel especially privileged to be a part 
of this WCLC uh, October webinar today. Thanks again, Dr. Kim. I had the opportunity many years ago to do some work in England. Uh, and my host at that time was an, a, a woman anointed of God from the crown of her head down to the soles of her feet. And I wondered where did she find all of the energy to do everything that she has done uh, in Europe. And when I heard that she would be uh, reading a Bible verse and the words of true mother, and her name was mentioned, I said, I don't believe she's still doing it. And I'm speaking of none other than a pastor, June Darby, who treated me uh, so well while I was in England. So now uh, to deliver um, the scriptural passage and true mother's words, we have none other than pastor June Darby, who is the director of the British Clergy Leadership Conference. Peace be with you, Pastor Darby. The floor is now yours. In the lower left hand, perfect. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for, for that uh, unworthy introduction, but bless you. I'm very honored to be here tonight, and I bow my head in respect to all the wonderful women and men of God who are partaking in this course, in this webinar tonight. So the reading is taken from Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 7 but the Lord said unto me say not I am a child for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee and whatsoever I command that thou shalt speak and then a speech from Mother Moon that was given at a special plenary of the Peace Summit, May 9, 2023. Um, it was an international peace conference with dignitaries from out around the world held at the Lotte Hotel Seoul on the 2nd to 6th of May. How and when shall peace come to humankind? Originally, the Creator's intention was to be our parent. The invisible creator created a man and a woman in the image of God as our first ancestors. Our first ancestors failed to uphold God's divine commandment and their descendants are the fallen human race of present day. What I would like to say is this. Would the creator of the universe as our parent simply watch quietly as the children suffer? I cannot describe the entirety of heaven's progress, of heaven's providence in the short time I have to speak. But what God waited and waited so long to see was for central people to emerge from among fallen humanity, a man and a woman who could attend God as their parent. In other words, God has been waiting for the birth of the true parents who can save everyone in this fallen world. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Darby. Words so powerfully delivered. As we now come to the main section of our webinar, where we hear from three outstanding speakers, especially on the theme of true family movement for world peace. We will hear about the global efforts that are being conducted in Europe, in the Middle East, in Africa, and Korea, the fatherland. We are privileged today to hear, to hear from an anointed, appointed, and approved man of God in the person of the Reverend Dr. Michael Balcom who serves as the distinguished chairman of the Family Federation for World Peace and Unification in Europe and the Middle East. And I think it was a birdie who told me that the very first person to receive his earned doctorate degree uh, in theology and ministry 
uh, from the Unification Theological Seminary was Michael Malcolm. And if I'm wrong about that, correct the record, please. But to know that we have the very first one to receive a doctorate degree from the uh, Unif Unification Theological Seminary known as UTS, and now it has the, a new name, the HJI uh, University, I think that we are in for a treat. Someone who served also as the continental direct, as the uh, uh, chairman of the Family Federation for World Peace and Unification in uh, North America, I had the, the privilege of being one of his students. He was my mentor, one of my mentors, and my I was his student. So I'm so glad to see him again and to hear uh, what is going on globally, particularly in uh, Europe and the Middle East. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, George, uh, for that embarrassingly effusive introduction. And uh, good evening, friends and uh, brothers and sisters in Christ in America. I have only a short time, so I'm going to get right to it and share with you some of the things the, of our ministry here in Europe. So I'm going to share my screen. Here it is. And uh, my topic really is how are we building the kingdom here in this huge area of Europe and the Middle East? I, it's enormous. We have 71 nations. We have 12 time zones. We have about 100 languages, 30 religions. And honestly, when I look at the map, I weep because, as you know very well, some of these very nations in the heart of our region are at violent war with each other. And people are dying every day, women, children, men. Um, you know, a few years ago, it would have seemed inconceivable that this level of violence would be here. But it is, and surely it is one more sign of the last days. And I ask myself, what or who can possibly unite such a diverse region? And of course, the answer is only God, the heavenly parent of us all. I'm sure, George, you remember when we shared the stage at Madison Square Garden a few years back. Uh, this May, on Pentecost Sunday, we had a similar event in Munich. We called it Bloom, Pentecost with True Mother. And the theme was welcoming the Holy Spirit into our lives. And just to remind you of that first Pentecost, suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house. It really was a festival of the Spirit. And your mother said this, I came here today because of Jesus' wish, Jesus who said that he would come again. And when he returns, there will be the marriage supper of the Lamb, and only then can we see the completion of the Christian providence. And you'll remember, surely, in Revelations 19 and 9, write this, said the angel, those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb are happy indeed. And we try to introduce our new VIPs. You know, sometimes we think the VIPs are the ministers and the scholars and the politicians, but not here in Europe. Uh, the VIPs are the little children who will inherit the kingdom. And True Mother was very happy to see them. It is a miracle of God indeed that these 200 kids could sit quietly for two hours. I... I became a true believer after I saw that. I'm going to cover a few things, our evangelical work, our work to save the nations, our leadership in transition, the reality of war and conflict, and our work in mitigating that and also national disasters. So in our 71 nations, we have Christian nations, we have post-Christian nations, we have Islamic republics and Islamic nations. In some countries, our Family Federation members work underground, and in others, they're able to practice their faith freely. We have secular nations, atheist nations, and we're trying to reach all of them with the new gospel. And one of the happy things is that we're starting to welcome, again, missionary teams from around the world. This year, we've welcomed 40 new missionaries from overseas, and this particular group of young people is uh, working at Greenwich University. You've all heard of Greenwich Mean Time, and this is where it happens, at the University of Greenwich. And uh, they're having a good response. Uh, the, the new school year has started. This was their opening gathering, uh, drawing together professors and students. And what we're finding, Bishop Stallings, is a thirst among young people for the Word of God. A few years ago, I thought that young people had forgotten about the 
the need for the Spirit. But it's not true. Actually, they are thirsty. And we're working as well with pastors here in Europe. This is our, our German clergy leadership conference a couple of weeks ago. And uh, Pastor Isaac Hayani, known to some of you, lecturing on the divine principle. Even our workshop site has sculptures illustrating Bible stories. So if you ever come to Germany, you can live it out and not just hear the words. And this was a recent Christian and interfaith divine principle workshop in Birmingham. Again, a packed crowd in a Christian church, but people of every faith eager to hear the word of God and to know how can we bring peace. In fact, we're starting a three-day retreat just tomorrow, uh, which is another thing that Reverend June Darby is leading, the theme attracting God's blessing to my nation. And speaking of the nations, you know, we know that God commands us that the nation should fear the name of the Lord and the kings of the earth should fear the glory of God. We've just celebrated the fifth anniversary of Mother Moon's visit to Tirana and Albania. She stood on the stage right there in the Palace of Congress with heads of state. And she told them, don't focus on being members of the European Union. Focus on being part of the kingdom of God. Not often the president gets told that. And every year we hold a conference in honor of that anniversary. This is a, a month ago. Uh, in Pristina with the Prime Minister, strong supporter of the work of the Family Federation and UPF, Alban Kurti there. And we're inviting all of these heads of state to come and be with us in Korea next April. This is the President of Albania. Um, interestingly, half of his staff are members of either UPF or the Family Federation. We have a challenge, though. Our leadership is skewing old. Luckily, we're all young on this call. But we sometimes have in a month more memorial services than baby dedications, which is serious. We've just concluded a recent uh, fellowship and prayer meeting in England, bringing our young leaders together. And we've realized that we have to make room for families. That means even the youngest of children have to join the conversation. So a very different type of leadership meeting. Uh, True Parents' grandson, Shincho, is uh, developing new forms of worship and praise. Uh, he's been working as a missionary in Albania for about eight months, and uh, he's becoming a fine and passionate speaker. But let's be honest, we have a problem in our region of war and conflict. Now, you could cite Matthew and say, this is a sign of the last days. I believe that it is. Uh, Lebanon right now is in crisis. Our movement there is struggling to help families escape from the carnage. We raised $50,000 for relief on our prayer call a couple of weeks ago, as well as feeding people. We're trying to help schools that have become refugee centers to add capacity for beds, showers, playgrounds. We had to blur the faces of some of the Islamic partners, but we're working to feed families who suddenly become homeless, even a few hundred families a day. It feels like nothing. But as Christ said, if you were hungry and I was hungry and you gave me something to eat, I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. And the righteous said, when, Lord, when you did it for even the least of me. And Russia and Ukraine, our focus, among other things, has been providing power sources and generators because the long, dark winter is coming. Ukraine is very cold. But we have happier projects as well, like Sunflower Center. It's a school for refugee children. It's been doing so well that it's attracted the support of the European Union, the Peace Corps, Catholic Charities, and others, all of which are funding it. And it's really a beautiful and happy place. CNN called it the happiest place in Moldova, the nation right next to Ukraine. And we have our share of natural disasters, too. Um, we've had earthquakes in Syria and Turkey, 125,000 people injured. Our members and their families, too, are affected. What can we do? We've gone straight to the, to the front line, places like Antioch, biblical cities that are, were in ruins, bringing, of course, in the immediate case, supplies, clothing, bedding, medicine, but also trying to create something a little more permanent, like new container homes and school classrooms, even though rebuilding may take many years. And I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't say, if you'd like to help, uh, here are the links to do so. Every penny that you donate will go to our relief work in Africa, in Ukraine, in the Middle East, 
And it's a small drop, but we are doing our best to spread the good news of the coming of the kingdom of God. I think I'm out of my time, so I will conclude here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Michael Balcom. Uh, tremendous work. I'm, I'm exhausted already. I'm glad I'm in America, <laughs> not in Europe, because you would you you are truly a workhorse. Thank you so much for your efforts. And as we continue to hear about the global efforts in establishing world peace uh, uh, through that mechanism of the true uh, family movement, we will now hear uh, what's going on in Africa. And this person is the mother. Is she's Mother Africa? I have admired her for decades in the work she has done. I'm speaking of none other than Dr. Kathy Rigney, who is the co-chairperson of the Universal Peace Federation Africa. And so let us receive our beloved sister, Dr. Kathy Rigney. The floor is now yours. Thank you, Patriarch Augustus. George Stallings, we love you so much in Africa. <clears throat> and as, uh, <clears throat> as Bishop Stallings mentioned, as he was watching the video of our African brothers and sisters singing Chonil Guk, I also was moved to tears and decided that today I would try to really share my heart because whenever I'm asked to give any kind of testimony about the, the work that our true mother, the mother of peace is doing worldwide, especially on the continent of Africa where she spent so much time uh, in the last three years, I really feel that the heart is where it all began and it's where it all continues to develop. I'd like to take this uh, opportunity to speak on a theme that touches the heart of humanity, so for peace, unity, and prosperity, and that's the true family movement for world peace, the global efforts in Europe, <clears throat> in Africa, and in Korea. This movement, was, which was initiated by Reverend Dr. Sung Myung Moon and Dr. Hak Jahan Moon, our mother of peace, centers on the ideal of true families as a cornerstone of a stable and harmonious world. I'd like to focus on Africa today, where this movement has seen remarkable growth and impact, largely through the expansion of the blessed families and sustained efforts of the U Universal Peace Federation and the Family Federation for World Peace and Unification. The true family movement through the practice of the blessing has spread across the continent of Africa and continues every day to spread like a wildfire, serving as a beacon of hope for the restoration of families and the restoration of communities. In Africa, the true family movement has thrived due to key events such as peace summits and blessing festivals that were organized by God's only begotten daughter, our, our, our precious true mother, during the years of 2018 and 2019, as mother traveled to over 10 different nations on the continent of Africa, spreading the blessing and spreading the true family movement. These gatherings not only celebrate family unity or the sanctity of marriage, but have also catalyzed the renewal of communities and societies Leaders from political, community, and religious spheres in Niger, Senegal, Sao Tome, Principe, and South Africa, Zimbabwe, have all extended their support, recognizing the transformative impact of this movement on each of these nations. These leaders understand, and I'm talking about current and former heads of state, they understand that to build lasting peace and national stability, there must be a focus on restoring families. In Niger, recently, with the Blessing Festival and support from national leaders, families came together in a powerful demonstration of unity in spite of external circumstances creating, trying to create chaos and confusion. On November 29, 2019, all participants attended the Family Renewal, Renewal Festival at the Palais de Congrès in Niamey, in Niger. And this country later, after having experienced confusion and chaos uh, on the political system, the president and the former prime minister of, of this country spoke up and said that peace shall come to our families through the true family movement. This was something that was brought to the message that was brought to the nation of Niger 
by our true mother, by Mother Moon, who <clears throat> hosted the event and extended her congratulations on behalf of the worldwide community to all the couples who participated in that in that very special event in, an, in a 98% Islamic country, and yet receiving the blessing from the God's only begotten daughter and, and really renewing family, family values during that event. It happened in front of summit participants. It happened in front of uh, current and, and former heads of state, official government representatives, and also presidents and vice presidents of national assemblies, ministers, parliamentarians, religious leaders, traditional rulers, and leaders of civil society, including women leaders, youth leaders, head of businesses and companies, delegations from Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and the United States, plus couples participating in the Family Renewal Festival. This is the power of the true family movement that came to Africa through the, the uh, advent of our true mother on that continent during the, the years of 2018 and 2019. In Sao Tome and Principe, the blessing became a celebrated national event, demonstrating the strength and appeal of the true family movement across diverse cultures and communities. As a result of so much investment, this overall program was a huge success. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an opportunity to bear witness to the Interfaith Peace and Family Festival aimed at promoting true family values for peace, which took place in various nations around Africa, especially centering on Orlando Stadium in Johannesburg, South Africa on June 8, 2019. This festival jointly organized by the Family Federation for World Peace and UPF, with the support of many interfaith associations in South Africa, attended by over 20,000 couples, was co-sponsored by Imboni Dr. Prophet Radebe, founder of the Revelation Home of God. The festival was presided over by the true mother of peace, Dr. Hak Jahan Moon. These are the traces that true mother has left in Africa in all these different nations, and they continue to develop and grow in various missions around the, the continent. And this is bringing a light of new hope and a new light of new faith developing on the continent. And we will continue to de 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 develop that as time goes on. The expansion of the true family movement in Africa is further evidenced by notable community examples. In South Africa, the movement has reached deep into the community of Imboni Dr. Radebe and also of, of, of Archbishop Indanga in Zimbabwe, who has embraced the principles of true family values as an anchor for religious and spiritual unity. In Zimbabwe, Archbishop Ndanga's dedication to the movement has set an inspiring example showing how true family ideal can resonate within diverse cultural and religious contexts. This vision has been carried forward by those known as heavenly tribal messiahs on Africa. Many blessed families have taken up the mission of becoming tribal messiahs with over 430 families and couples reaching out to bless others in their communities, in their religious institutions and societies. These victorious coaches have contributed to the com global community of Chonbo couples, spreading the blessings transformative power far and wide. Their dedication has truly amplified the reach of the true family movement, illustrating that peace does begin at the family level and grows outward. The true family movement has firmly established itself as a path to sustainable peace, unity, and prosperity, affirming that nothing could be achieved sustainably without a renewal of family values centered on the true parent's vision and the ideal of the blessing. Scholars and analysts, including experts at the American Expertise Institute, affirm that the solution to many of society's challenges lies in the reconstruction of stable families. Strong families build strong societies, and this is a starting point of restoring true love, true life, and true lineage, which were lost in humanity's first family. The blessing as a manifestation of the true family movement in primarily a family-centered and culturally enriching event. It serves as a way for people to reconnect the ideas of commitment, love, and shared purpose. 
the words of the true parents, Reverend Dr. Sung Young Moon and Dr. Hak Jahan Moon continue to inspire those participating in the true family movement on the continent of Africa. Especially Especially, our true mother, Dr. Hakcha, has been at the forefront of this movement, presiding over ceremonies in Africa herself, including memorable events in Niger, Sao Tome, in South Africa, in Zimbabwe. She has emphasized that the family is a bedrock of peace, teaching that only through true love in the family can we create a culture of harmony and build a world of lasting peace. Her dedication to this mission as a mother of peace is a testimony to her commitment to seeing true family ideals blossom worldwide. The blessing has also taken on even greater significance as we approach the upcoming Chonwengun entrance ceremony on April 2025. This milestone event will serve as a reminder of the transformative power of the true family movement and of the blessing that unites all people as one global family under God. And Africa is now in the process of going forward to accomplish a, a, a great goal of bringing you, the youth, young people, to this true family blessing in Korea in April of 2025. On every continent, and especially in Africa, we have witnessed the active commitment of Mother Moon to the expansion of the blessing and to the true family movement. She has stood at the forefront, embodying the ideals of a loving mother for all humankind. Today, we invite you to join the True Family Movement and through the blessing, help fulfill the dream of a world united as one family under God. Together, we can build a peaceful, harmonious, and prosperous world by restoring the ideal of true love within each family. Let us be champions of the True, true Family Movement carrying forward the dream of a world of peace of love and fulfilling the dream of our beloved and precious true parents. Thank you very much. Well, Aju, thank you so much, Dr. Kathy Rigney. If anyone has any question or doubt about the investment of true parents in Africa, your report today will convince them that the true parents have invested rather than seeking to exploit or take advantage of a great continent consisting of 54 nations. Uh, you have been at the very heart of the work of true parents there in Africa and your report on the global efforts to bring true and lasting peace uh, as a true family movement is evidenced by your report. And I know it was difficult for you to finish that report with just the touch of two parents' uh, indelible mark left on your life. And I thank you for your witness and your testimony. So we've heard about the uh, global efforts in Europe and the Middle East by Dr. Balcom. We've heard about the global efforts to establish peace in uh, Africa. Now we hear about those global efforts to establish world peace in the fatherland known to all of us as the land of the morning called Korea. Minister Laura Young is the international director for KCLC, the Korean Clergy Leadership Conference, and also a quite uh, famous uh, YouTube uh, presenter as the United Methodist YouTube minister, Peace Messenger. And I've had the privilege of meeting uh, Minister Laura Young on several occasions while in uh, Korea, and so we now can all share in her love and commitment and dedication to world peace. Let us now receive Minister Laura, Laura Young. The floor is Thank now. Thank you. Here. Thank you, Patriarch Stallings. God bless all the finalists at Korea's turn. And it's an honor to introduce about the global effort in Korea as an activity that strives for peace. At KCLC, we have a monthly prayer meetings to reflect on current issues in the world and pray together. And the last time we went to the Odusan Unification Observatory near the DMG and the Foreign Missionary Cemetery along the Hangan River. I will continue showing uh, the pictures on my screen. This is the Odusan Unification Observatory 
observatory tower is uh, overlooking North Korea and at the bottom of the observatory, a river flows between North and South Korea. This is um, the called Imjingang River that is technically maritime DMG. From this place, we can see the North Korean village, even the farmers, they're only two or three kilometers away. And you know what? The narrowest the part of Imjingang River is only 206 meters wide. So we can cross the stream over 206 meters, but can't. Uh, we will be shot. As you know, DMG means a demilitarized zone, but DMD in Korean Peninsula is the most fortified, heavily militarized zone. So at this meaningful place, we reflect on the enduring hope for peace and reunification. Early morning, we gathered at the large drum in the front yard of the Odusan Observatory called the Unification Wishing Drum. We all put our hands on the drum and prayed in a loud voice. It's a Korean style. And we sang a song. Our wish is unification. Inside the tower, we saw artwork created by North Korean defectors. There are 5,000 small-sided tile paintings on the wall. They painted their home in North Korea, expressing their deep longing for their homeland and hope for uh, reconciliation and freedom. And there's a unification piano, but no sound when I played there uh, because the piano strings were brought from the barbed wire fence inside the DMG. It's a symbolic meaning. I'm sure the piano will make a beautiful sound when Korea is united. On the third floor of the vision deck, as we overlooked North Korean land, we continue to lift our heart in prayer, seeking God's intervention for the healing and reunification of this divided nation. Please pray for Korea. It has been 71 years since the armistice agreement in 1953. In the Bible, the book of Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse seven, a time to tear and a time to mend. Yes, it's time to unify Korea. You probably heard the news, North Korean soldiers deployed to Russia to fight against Ukraine. The danger of war still exists in Korean Peninsula. This place, Odusan Unification Observatory, is only one hour by car from Seoul. So on the way back to Seoul, we visited uh, Yang Hwajin Shrine and uh, Cemetery to remember the legacy of foreign missionaries who dedicated their lives to Korea during the 19th and 20th century. Yang Hwajin is a port name, main port on the Hangar River, which runs through Seoul. I know you're familiar with Incheon International Airport. Even 100 years ago, when the main transportation was ships, Incheon Port was Korea's main harbor. Foreign vessels arriving at Incheon Port would sail up to this Hangang River, this place, Yang Hwajin, Seoul. Catholicism, which came in around the 18th century, clashed with the rigid social hierarchy of Korea. Hundreds of years ago, Korea was called Joseon. Joseon rulers, the king, are threatened, feel threatened because of this. Joseon rejected Catholicism, just as Christians were persecuted in ancient Rome, missionaries in Korea faced a similar persecution. Many foreign missionaries and Catholic believers were executed at this Yanghwajin port. Over 8,000 believers were beheaded, earning the name Jeotusan, meaning the mountain of severed heads. Against the execution of French missionaries, the French worship came to this Yang Hwajin port in 1866 and fought. And five years later, American wars invaded Gangado Island near the Incheon. Those invasions eventually made an agreement to the open to open the port 
toward the foreigners. Following the opening of the port, Presbyterians and the Methodist YMCA Salvation Army, many missionaries entered Korea who devoted their lives to serving Koreans. They are buried here at Yangwajin. 145 missionaries arrested. So Yangwajin became the cemetery for foreigners. They gave up their lives. Uh, they gave up their life, promising careers, came to Korea where they never heard, never known the poorest land, far from their hometown. These missionaries, these more than just preach the gospel. They helped the Korean society by building schools, hospitals, taking care of the poor and widows, often just as Bible says. And even they supported Korea's independence movement during the Japanese occupation period. They lived out Christian love by sacrificing themselves for others. KCLC, we prayed at the graves of each missionaries. Medical missionary Hardy, a founder of Jongdong Methodist Church, Appendeller, a founder of Seminan Presbyterian Church, Underwood, Christmas seal, Lujeta Ho. We, we all thank them for their service. KCLC, as a religious leaders, we honor their legacy by continuing their mission of love, service, and care for those in need. We owe them a great love, the depth of love. As we spent time together there and prayed, we realized that God called them to Korea 100 years ago. Now, God is calling us to do the same thing to the world, to make the world make the better word a peaceful word. Amen. Amen. And Aju, Minister Laura Young, thank you for that thorough report. Our hearts are connected to the fatherland through true parents. And your presentation today help us to realize, help your presentation today helps us come to a realization there's still much work to be done. As the land of the morning calm goes toward reunification and establishment of world peace. So will the rest of the world go. Thanks again. Kansamdina. And for our closing prayer today, we bring forth a native of Guyana, a friend of all of us, the Reverend Dr. Lao Singh, who is a senior pastor of the Hollis Family Assembly of God in Jamaica, Queens. Dr. Singh, peace be with you. Please lead us in the closing prayer. Here am I sitting in awe at those three presentation. Full of wisdom, full of knowledge, full of ex experience from those three great speakers. I know I'm called to just close in prayer. But I'm hearing from all of us, we are saying to God, use us. There's so much work to be done. So let us bow our heads Ask God to bless each one of us and the vision that was cast forth will become fruition. God, this afternoon, we give you honor. You said in your word, your people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I am honored today to sit under those three presentations full of words, full of wisdom and full of vision. Let me be one that you will use. So today, God, as we pray for the family around the world, we thank you, Lord, for people with vision, people with burden, people with a heart that is burning to do the work of God. Lord, today I thank you for world peace, world federation. We thank you for K C L C A C L L A, and we thank you, Lord, because you can do the work. Where the people has a vision, though you will do the rest. So today, God, we thank you because you sent your only begotten Son. You want us to understand the essence of Jesus, that we ourselves will become pure and living water. We will understand the peace 
within ourselves. God, when we have the peace within ourselves, we could share it, not just to Guyana, but to the world, to Europe, to Fatherland, to Africa, North America, South America, Europe. And God, we are believing you to unite us through this organization. Lord, I thank you have met such a strong interfaith organization. That Lord that covers over 71 nation, 12 time zone, over 100 languages. All I'm asking you, Lord, make us one to the glory of God the Father. Thank you for Mother Moon with such a great vision that Lord, she's not taking, but she's giving because of the passion she has to unite the world. Bless of all of us, God, and I pray today that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight, dear Lord. And Lord, we thank you because you're calling, because you want each one of us to make the world a better place. And God, in the name, your name, we ask your blessing with my wife and I standing here we thank you for being a blessed family. Cover each one. Extend each one of us with our vision and passion to bring peace to the world. In your most holy name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Dr. Singh, for an anointed prayer. Adieu. Welcome. And thanks to each of you for participating in the WCLC October 2024 webinar. Looking forward to seeing you all again next month and especially a, a deep, our deepest thanks and appreciation to our three presenters today. God bless you. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Dr. Jenkins uh, here and Dr. Wallace is here and Minister Michael Jenkins also here. Uh, thank you so much for your support. And thank you, Dr. Kim. Thank you, Dr. Kim. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. 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 Thank you, Worldwide. Oh, <laughs> Thank you to our translators. <laughs> yes. Amazing. Thank you, Pierre.